There you go. Hello Palpation Nation, welcome to the vlog. Today I have my stunt double, our newest associate, Matt Cumlin, coming at us from Cochrane, Alberta. Weighing in, how much do you weigh? Two. <laughs> <laughs> but Matt's been driving me around today and uh, he's also getting the dirty work done. We got a few more post-mortems left. I'm not sure anything past that, but we'll see what the pathology is. Matt thinks that this is gonna be a chronic pneumonia. Hey Matt, rookie move. I don't have schnauzers. Locked out by old schnauzer trick. Hey bud. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks Matt. How many times has Finney locked us into the truck today alone? 100%. 100% every stop. Finney just steps right on the lock. That's like his spot. He loves it. Get to the back. Okay, that guy had a septic arthritis and was euthanized, so not spectacular pathology. We'll see if we can find something more interesting at the next dead pit. Three! Matt says he has an abscess. It's abscess day, everybody. Weird. Looks like lemon meringue pie. Right? Weird. So a huge mesenteric abscess. And just kept going and going. Oh, this edema and the mesenteric fat. There was a fissula that migrated up towards the rumen and it looks like there might have been some sort of intestinal leakage that caused the peritonitis. So the final diagnosis would be abdominal abscess slash peritonitis. Good case, Matt. See all those multifocal miliary abscesses? They're coalescing into pulmonary uh, sequestrum. The mycoplasma pneumonia. Pretty classic presentation. How pretty it is. Thumbnail. The dorsal lung lobe of the last calf that Matt did is just a spectacular example of emphysema. So it, so air, quite inflated lung, but it's also heavy. So we do think it has an interstitial pattern. So he had a bronchopneumonia in the cranial ventral lung lobes. So that's a bronchopneumonia plus this interstitial pattern. See, interstitial. And that makes it a bronchointerstitial pneumonia. That could be viral in origin or bacterial or mixed or both.
I'll take that sleeve now. the day that was my first day out on the road with dr. Matt he's been with us for a couple of weeks but he's been going with the other veterinarians I'm really excited to bring another vet onto the team our practice is growing and uh, we've been accepting tons of new clients and we just needed another cow vet after we did the post-mortems we had a prolapse to do so this was a rectal prolapse that had been done prior and uh, the day before and it was still straining so what I ended up doing was just cutting out the stitches I didn't know if it was causing excess irritation and I went ahead and did an alcohol block so a permanent epidural we reserve permanent epidurals just because they can have a higher complication rate than lidocaine epidurals do but they last always they're permanent permanent epidurals so that cow permanently will no longer feel her bum and hopefully that'll decrease the amount of irritation and pushing that's going on and make that cow more relaxed until slaughter. Uh, so the al alcohol epidural works the same. So you can use ethanol or isopropyl alcohol. Sometimes I'll put a mill of lidocaine in. Uh, that time I didn't and you just put it in the epidural space. Uh, use three mils and provides that anesthesia that lasts forever. What the alcohol does is it demyelinates the nerves, so it breaks down the myelin sheath, and then there can't be a nerve transmission or a proper nerve transmission. Postmortems and prolapses. The, my two favorite P's of bovine medicine. Always Stay out of my gas hole. <laughs> 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 